Hi everyone and welcome to Living Overseas on a Dime. I'm Noel. I'm Jenny. And today we're going to talk about travel tips for Puerto Vallarta. So make sure you stay tuned to the end because we're going to have a really important safety tip for you. Here we go. We got lots of feedback on our different videos and the most popular one I think was just, do you have any tips for us? For going to Puerto Vallarta yeah. and uh, if you've never been we highly recommend we love Puerto Vallarta so we just kind of made up a big list of different things uh, to look for and what to do in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah if this is your first trip to Puerto Vallarta this is definitely the video for you it'll give you lots of little hints and tips and tricks to you know just keep you safe and, and have your best holiday. And to help you along. Yeah. Okay our first tip is coming off the airplane you know, this is kind of after the, the planning portion, of course, but a lot of people may talk about this thing called the shark tank. Now they even, on our first flight down, they actually warned us about the shark tank, mm -hmm. which amazed me on none of the f trips after that though, just the first no, one. No, yeah. But when you are coming out, it looks like you're into like an actual airport section. There will be tons of people saying, hey, come here, this, blah, blah. Yeah. And it looks like there's official counters. Do not engage. Do not engage. These are mostly timeshare people. Keep walking. If they offer you a taxi, keep walking. Yeah. Just walk and you'll get to the end and there's another <laughs> set of doors when you will actually be in the airport proper. You'll see like the regular, you know, United Airlines counters and all that. That's where you can go to the taxi stand and actually pay for a set rate taxi. So don't, don't take anything there. They're trying to sell you stuff. They're trying to sell yeah. you timeshares. They're trying to sell you expensive rides in private vehicles like just keep going and you'll get to the place you need to be another thing at the airport is once you get out of the shark tank and you get to the area there's taxis with set rates now you may think oh well i can bargain with the taxis and i can do better yeah well maybe but not there the taxis that go from the airport are government regulated they're white airport taxis and they're set rates to the different zones so if you make sure you have your address of the place you want to go to and then when you come out mm -hmm. you can look and they'll actually say oh that's in this zone and the price is set so there's no real concern about getting ripped off even though the prices are inflated at yeah, the it's airport be more expensive but, you know <laughs> yeah that is what it is um, another thing is that uber is not allowed to pick you up at the airport and drive you to a place yeah. it's even becoming difficult for private drivers to do that so it's just something to be aware of if that you're normally using Uber to get around. Uh, another thing is if you do want to take a regular cab from the airport, you can go out. When you come out to the main exit, you turn left and you keep going and you'll kind of come to this pedestrian bridge. Once you cross the bridge, you can flag down a regular taxi. Uh, you know, if you have any mobility issues, it is like a, there aren't stairs. It's actually like a walking up thing. Yeah. But at the same time, like, it is a bit far if you got a couple bags, so yeah. it's just something to be aware of. Yeah, we usually just take the set rate taxi. Yeah. It's not, it's expensive, but not that. It's no, not it's not break horrible. the bank, you know. So. It's maybe $20, $20 US yeah. or something. And we're so. usually just too lazy to go for yeah. the pedestrian bridge with our suitcases or yeah. our bags. So we usually just do the set rate taxi. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's expensive, but not that expensive, yeah. so. All right, so the next question we were getting was, where do we stay? Well, we found that we're not big resort people. No. Um, we don't really like staying at hotels with a buffet. We like to experience Puerto Vallarta and all the little restaurants and go out to eat and sometimes cook for ourselves as well. We've got a son, so, you yeah. know, we hate doing it, uh, you know, hotel schedules where the buffet, the food sitting out. That's not our thing at all. So yeah, it, we, we have tried them before. Yeah. It's just we realized after a few they're not for us. Yeah. So, you know, there are different zones. If you want to be close to the Melocon, which is the boardwalk, um, and right near the Melocon, uh, there's, you know, lots of restaurants. That's where the main beach is. Um, I'd say if you want that kind of atmosphere where you're going to go out and try different restaurants and walk on the Melocon and see the beautiful sunsets on the beach, we'd recommend, you know, the hotel zone or Centro. It's great there. Um, if you want, if you're traveling with your family and you've got young kids and you want a pool and you want that resort hotel feel, 
and have the buffets, um, we'd say stay in the marina or in the in the hotel zone. Yeah. And that way, if you want to still go to the boardwalk, you can take a bus and uh, you know go see the Melcon and do a few little day trips here and there. Um, if you want something really more quiet, romantic, uh, secluded, <laughs> we'd say Conscious Chinas area. Yeah. Uh, just be aware, we stayed in Conscious Chinas and we loved it, but you have to take a bus down a hill or up a hill to get into the romantic zone central area. So just be aware, it, it's walkable, but it's busy. There's lots of cars. Yeah. Um, it took around 10 minutes to by bus to it's get often packed town. though that's it's, something to be it's aware of. fairly busy as well but if you want a really nice secluded yeah. uh romantic getaway that's a bit more quiet conscious genius is a nice place as well yeah. so just be aware there are different areas and it really depends what you want to uh experience if you want to be in the heart of rock and roll you want to be in the zona romantica or the romantic zone that's right there that's where everything's happening yeah. that's where all the restaurants are it's pretty noisy but uh, hey, <laughs> you know what? If you want to have a real good time and party, your Centro's right beside you, Malacan's there. Yeah. It's, it's definitely the place to be. Now we'll come on to the topic of money. <laughs> uh, a lot of people often ask, well, can I just use US dollars? Can I just use Canadian dollars? And you know what? You can, especially US dollars, but it's not easy. Now you have to look, are you on a resort? No. Are you not going out? If you're on a resort and you're mostly staying at the resort, then yeah, you probably could just tip in US dollars. Yeah. But if you are not on a resort or you have any plans on going from your resort out, you're staying in Airbnb, yeah. staying in a hotel, wherever, romantic zone, you need pesos. So we recommend you get a few pesos before you leave, just so you don't have to worry when you land and yeah. you can get to the airport, you have a bit of money so you can go, you can pay for the taxi or whatever you need when you first get there. Now, that means, well, what do you do afterwards, right? Well, you need to go to an ATM. Now, we recommend bring a couple of different cards. We actually brought sure. like four, I think. Uh, have, or at least two credit yeah, cards. Yeah. Have some credit cards, have a debit card, like yeah. your bank card. And that way, you know, like there is a chance it happens sometimes where machines eat cards. That happened to you once. Yeah, and I got it back, thank yeah. God. A lot of people don't. Um, it also can be that that card just doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. We had that happen and we actually saw a nice young couple this last time there who were like, we don't know what to do. We've gone to like five banks yeah. and our bank card doesn't work. You got to get on the phone. There's all these different things. So just have a few cards in case you run into mm -hmm. any trouble. The next thing, and this is on a lot of Facebook groups, but if you don't, you're not a Facebook person, you may not know. Um, when you put your card in and it starts up and you put in, okay, I want to take out this, this amount of money. This is debit card, right? Yeah, okay. for debit card. It will say, do you accept this conversion rate? Say no. Now, most of the time, especially with US banks, it will then do it on your bank's conversion rate, which is pretty much always better. Mm -hmm. Now, with our bank card, it didn't work. No. So it's something to be aware of. Sometimes if you press no, it just says okay and gives you your card back. Yeah, and that's and for a Canadian it. debit card. Yeah, it may work in others, it but might... ours it didn't. Yeah. For Royal Bank uh, and Tangerine, which is part of Bank of Nova Scotia, so those didn't work. So what do we do then? Well, we just used our credit card and the credit card, you gotta make sure you're not running a balance cause that'll get you in some trouble with the, the interest. But ours, we pay off every month. Yeah. So all we did was we withdrew the money and then transferred the money directly from our bank to mm -hmm. our credit card and it was no issue. Yeah. And that was good cause all we had to pay was the $5 to our uh, credit card for the, the cash withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And so there was no additional fees on top of that. The next point is, uh how about food safety, um, restaurants, that kind of thing. So we had no problems with street food. Now, no. you need to be smart about it. <laughs> you know, if you see a street, a street taco vendor and it doesn't look fresh and no one's eating there and it looks like it's been sitting out in the heat, don't eat there, yeah. <laughs> you know, but we, uh, a bunch of times, we've seen taco vendors or just street vendors and it's packed yeah. and it's busy and everybody's eating there and it looks like it's fresh and it's at 12 o'clock right at lunchtime and there's a lineup of people. Yeah. By all means, eat there. So here's a tip that we learned when we did a food tour. Um, lots of the street stands don't have a sink that's available for washing dishes and the lady gave us a good tip. She yeah. said, 
if you're eating street food, like at a taco vendor or whatever, um, look to make sure that they have a plastic bag on top of the plate that they're giving you food on mm -hmm. and then, because they're not washing the plates, right? And then when that's done, they just throw out the plate and then put another clean plastic bag over it. So really look for that. That was a really A lot of them also tip. wear similar gloves, yeah. plastic gloves when preparing the food. Yeah. Really, if they've got that and there's really high turnover, like the food's going to be super fresh. Yeah, like it's, it's going to be fresh. It's going, 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 right? It's not sitting around. So. Yeah. So by all means, try the street food. That's the best part yeah, of, of Puerto Vallarta. Um, that being said, uh, you know, for big restaurants, we've had no problems yeah. and we got lots of questions. Can we use Visa? For most nicer, bigger restaurants, of course you can use Visa. The street vendors, yeah. they take cash. They won't take Visa and it, it makes sense. So always have some pesos in, in your wallet for the street vendors. And then when you go to a nice restaurant, you can use your credit card. So that's just another good tip. Kind of continuing on from the restaurants is talking about water. I know a lot of people are concerned about water safety when going to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And at least in Puerto Vallarta, I don't think you really need to be. Now, what I mean by that is that people are like, oh, can I have the ice at restaurants? 99% yeah. of the restaurants are using filtered water in their ice. A yeah. lot of them are actually bringing it from a place that that's what they specialize yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't need to be worried about that. Now, when it comes to bottled water that you buy in the stores, these are major, like OXO, this is a nationwide chain, yeah. and it's completely safe to drink the bottled water from yeah. there. Now, it's interesting because Puerto Vallarta is unusual in that apparently it's tap water is safe to drink. Now, I'm not recommending that. We didn't no. do that. However, if you knew that your pipes and the storage location, like the tank of where it mm -hmm. came from was new, and you were living in a place long term, from some of the people that we spoke to, it's completely safe to drink. But now, most people, they just, you can get uh, like the big 20 blue, liter, yeah. uh, jugs of water and you'll see in most of you, if you stay in an Airbnb, they'll have like a little jug thing that you flip it upside down and then you just pour your water into your yeah. water or bottles. Or a pump on the top. Or a pump on the, on the top. Or you just go to OXO and get the five liter bottles. Yeah, five and, or 10. And they're, yeah. they're cheap. The, the water is really cheap to buy. So that's what most people do. Yeah. So another tip, more and more people, and this is the route we go, is more and more people are staying at Airbnbs. That way you have the freedom to go out when you want, to eat, or cook at home, right? Sometimes you just get tired of, of eating out and you just want to stay home. So for Airbnbs, we always recommend um, go grocery shopping. There's so many options. You've got Walmart, you've got Costco, you've got uh, Le Comer, um, but what we recommend and we found is whatever neighbor your neighborhood you're in, there'll be a local butcher and it's refrigerated, yeah. the meat is safe, or the little local grocery stores. Now, the first time we went to a little local grocery store, they're open air markets and you'll see they have tomatoes in a bin and all the vegetables <laughs> in a bin and just everything on the shelves. If you're getting like bananas or vegetables or avocados, they have like plastic tubs. And so you put all your veggies and bananas or whatever you're getting in the kind of plastic tub. Then you bring it up to the front desk and they have a scale and they'll weigh everything and then they tally everything up. And if you're not good with your numbers, just pull out the calculator or they'll pull out a calculator and they'll give you the final total. So we didn't know yeah, how it works. Yeah, kind of entertaining. Yeah, because there's not really uh, like plastic bags like back home. Um, so some of the bigger places might have that, some but of those them little do. markets don't. Yeah, the so, part, yeah, or they'll put it in a plastic bag and separate it after they weigh it. So yeah. it really depends on the place. And you know, we, we always recommend it. Always, if you can, support those little local grocery stores. Now, be careful. You need to wash your produce. Yeah. Right? There's a, yeah, there's a solution you can get that is a, a mixture, I think, of vinegar. And, you can just use vinegar and water. Yeah, it's like and, a vegetable solution. Yeah. We bought ours at Walmart. Yeah. Um, a lot of the grocery stores, little markets sell it too. And you just put a couple of drops of that in water and then you wash your vegetables. You need to watch the, wash the vegetables. Especially though. your leafy greens. Yeah, leafy greens. Now, that being said, if you go to Walmart, we bought the pre-washed like spinach mixes if you go to Walmart, you could buy it there. But if you're just buying the fresh produce, like from the little grocery mm -hmm. stores, 
you got to wash everything. Okay, our next tip, <laughs> and this is one people just generally don't talk about, is going to the toilet. <laughs> now, okay, you know, it's something that I guess people don't talk about, but it's something you need to know if you're traveling, especially if you're going around Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. I'll tell you two letters you need to know. WC. That means toilet and uh, also baños. Yeah. These are the, the two words that you might see in relation to toilets and uh, they're hard to find. Well, now you got to know what to look for. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so, okay, I'll give you one hint. So for example, the main romantic zone area, there's a beautiful park that have tiled chairs all the way around and a really nice kind of center uh, yeah. platform. Yeah. Underneath in the parking lot, are the toilets. Yeah, there's stairs that go down. Yeah. Now you have to pay a little bit. I can't remember, is it eight or 10 pesos? But that's another thing. In most of the restrooms you're going to use, you gotta pay. You have to pay. Yeah, so it's have usually like five pesos. Five to 10, so have, yeah. it, have it around. Also bring your own toilet paper. And uh, often they will give you stuff. Yeah, but they'll give you, you a sheet know. of toilet paper, but yeah, it, just buy a pack or just bring your own. Right? And they might be squatters. Just be careful. <laughs> they might be. Usually you not, don't know. but you yeah. know. Um, and there's like a turn to, to when you pay, you usually put your coin in yeah. in a like a, a machine and then there'll be a turnstile yeah. and then you push it and then you go into the bathroom. Um, so just be aware of that. And like I said, look for a WC sign. So when you're walking down the Melicon or anywhere, you'll be in a neighborhood and you're like, where's the bathrooms? Yeah. Well, there's lots in restaurants. Of course, you can... And that's what lots of people do, right? You'll go eat at a restaurant and use their bathroom. But if you're just walking down the Melicon and you have to go to the bathroom, um, you'll just see like a big W, literally mm -hmm. WC sign with an arrow. And that's Yeah, you'll a have bathroom. to kind of find it like, sometimes it's through a maze. Yeah, sometimes you got to go into a little market. But as long as you see that WC yeah. sign with an arrow, just go in that direction and there'll be a paid bathroom. Yeah, somewhere. and if there's someone sitting in front, that's the person you give the money yeah. to. They, there won't be a turnstile there. Yeah, yeah. So, so just to be you know. aware of, we, we didn't know. We're like, where are the bathrooms? Yeah. Look for a WC. Yeah, there's side. actually quite a few around there if, are. You, if you are aware. Yeah. Transportation. Um, the transportation is actually quite good in Puerto Vallarta. We found, we took the buses all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we highly recommend them. They've mostly been upgraded yeah they used to be old and smelly and, yeah 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 hole in the floor yeah. but most of them now are pretty upgraded some still don't have air con some do yeah. it really depends but we love it because it's only 10 pesos um for one ride um and so for the buses know what area you're going to or what area you're in and at the front of the bus it'll say like romantic zone or it'll walmart. say walmart <laughs> yeah. you know you're going to walmart right so look and see or it'll say conscious chinas and you know it's going there so really look at the front of the bus to see where it's going and mm -hmm. and you can ask the bus driver too just to double check right so another thing to note for transportation is if you are going to take ca taxis well first of all it's cash only yeah. so uh make sure you have small bills on you because sometimes they won't have ch won't, have, won't change. have change yeah so that's something you need to be aware of also always negotiate your price ahead of time i don't think we took a single cab that used a meter in uh puerto Vallarta. no it's just not really that you no. just so say where are you going get, get it and then have your phone because they may try and pull it like oh i don't you didn't understand the number mm -hmm. and maybe you didn't Put the number on your calculator, say, is this it? Yeah. And they'll say C or no, and then they'll put it in. And then once you come to an agreement, stick to that. Yeah, double check all the time. It's, it's just a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Our final tip is concerning safety. Now, this is the one at the beginning that I said, wait till the end. And this is a very important one. Um, you know, the nice thing about Puerto Vallarta it is it is, for the most part, very safe. Yeah. It's not like some big city where you're gonna get, you know, mugged at knife point or anything like mm -hmm. that. I'm sure it happens, but it's pretty rare. Yeah, I walked around at night by yeah. myself and I had no issues. So there are pretty much two major concerns in relation to safety. We'll do the smaller one first and then the bigger one that seems mm -hmm. to be happening quite often these days. So the smaller one is purse, purse snatching, okay? so. You know, this isn't where someone's gonna come up and rip it off your shoulder. It's more a crime of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if you leave out your bag on the side of your chair and your chair is right beside the Malacon and you yeah. happen to go to the restroom, 
it might not be there when you get back. Yeah, a so. lot of tables at restaurants are on the sidewalk yeah. by the street, right? So, uh, you know, and a lot of times they'll uh, give you like, it's almost like a coat hanger yeah, with hanger. hooks on it and you can hang your bag on there. Just make sure it's not on right the side beside of the, the street. Yeah. Like make sure it's farther in the restaurant. And yeah, if or if you're sitting with another person and it's a four seat table, don't leave your bag close to the road yeah. on an empty seat. That's all we're saying, right? Yeah. Keep it on the inside. Yeah, we're kind of paranoid. We generally like huh? wrap the, the band, the strap on the leg that we're sitting on under the table. But hey, that's us. You know, but we yeah, we, lots of places. We had heard more and more that there's yeah. more purse snatchings, especially uh, if you leave your, your purse just like on an empty chair by the street. Okay, the final point, and this is the most important one, and this is, sadly seems to be happening fairly often, and it's a type of pickpocketing. And that is what we call the mustard and ketchup scam. Now, basically, this is what happens. You'll be walking somewhere. It could be on the Malacon. It often happens in stores, Walmart, you name it, Costco, where somehow something will get squirted all over you. It can be mustard. It can be ketchup. It can be mayonnaise. It can be who knows what. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you have these people appear out of nowhere who have come to help you clean up. Now, while they're helping you clean up, somehow your wallet disappears or your bag that was on your cart yes. disappears. So pretty much our recommendation in this situation is if this happens to you and just first of all, be aware, keep your awareness up. Yeah. Doesn't mean be hyper vigilant. Just pay attention when you're in public, when someone, especially when someone starts to approach you closely, yeah. pay attention. Next, if you do get sprayed with a substance, just start yelling help. You may not know Spanish. That's fine. If you start yelling help yeah. and backing up and putting your hands up, yeah. these people are going to take off. Yeah, they, don't let people touch you. Yeah, they're not They're not like violent muggers. No. These no, are, once just... again, it's another crime of opportunity where they have this scam that has worked, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the instant you get something sprayed on you, now you know. You know about this scam, so you know how to react. It may still not work. They may still get your bag. Yeah. But you'll be safe and you'll be aware. Yeah, so, we've never had it happen to no. us. We've never seen it happen to anyone, but you know, following Facebook groups, we've heard more and more times, yeah, multiple times. about the purse snatchings and, and this mustard thing or ketchup thing. Yeah. So just be aware of it. So kind of our, our last concluding tip is, you know what, just go to Puerto Vallarta. If you're afraid and you're like, well, I don't know if I could handle yeah. staying in an Airbnb, that's fine. Stay in a resort. And then slowly as your courage gets up, go out on a little day trip yeah. into town because I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're gonna love it. You you are you are, and you know, um, you know, you've got people like my father who goes there every year, and he hi Chris hi <laughs> he he loves the hotel. Yep, he he loves the hotel experience, but he still they'll go to the Melacon, do a nice sunset dinner, yeah. walk along the Melacon, and do a few other little day trips here and there, and walk along the harbor and. You name it, right? So we recommend if if you want to yeah, try Mexico, hesitant, try it out. Try PV. It's a beautiful place. The yeah. food is really some of the best we've had yeah. in Mexico, um, and it it really is a beautiful place. And then if you want to go again, maybe yeah. try an Airbnb. Exactly. And then get brave enough to go to the restaurants because I'm telling you, there's lots of English. If you yeah. don't know Spanish, don't worry about the English. Don't worry about the English. <laughs> like, I, you know, we had no problems None. going to the restaurants, especially in the romantic zone yeah. area central, or central yeah. area. Uh, lots of people speak English. So don't be scared to have that experience of going to a restaurant and ordering food. That was our favorite part yeah. of not being tied down to a buffet at a hotel. Try that. Try the Airbnb experience or stay at a smaller hotel that's close to restaurants yeah. and go out, enjoy it. Like the whole part about going to Mexico is, in, is interacting with the people there. They're great, super friendly and enjoying the food and the sights. Yeah. So we just like to say thank you to everybody. We just hit 600 subscribers and we are so grateful. We're really enjoying sharing our travel experiences with everyone. Yeah. And you know what, if you haven't already, subscribe down below. And uh, we'll be bringing more content about Mexico yeah. and traveling the world and yeah. Turkey and all these different places we are checking out for retirement and for living overseas. Yes. So thank you so much. You know, it started off just making videos to try and help people 
for our parents to see where we're traveling. And yeah, we've gotten great comments. Yeah, thank you everybody for great, participating. Great support. Um, if you are looking for something specific or yeah. if there's a video we haven't made yet that you're interested in, drop a comment below and we'll try and make one for you. So, you know, we're always open to ideas. So please let, let us, us know. know. And uh, I hope this video helped. Yeah. Everyone stay safe. Happy travels. Happy travels.